guys, it's uh, springtime and the snow is finally going away and one of my favorite things to do is open up the old barn here and see what we can take for a drive. And today, not just because it's parked at the back of the barn, but kind of, I thought it'd be fun to get the old DS out. This is uh, 1971 uh, Citroen D Safari, uh, Safari being the wagon or a brake, uh, brake being uh, the French bastardization of uh, shooting brake, I guess, and spelled B-R-E-A-K in the French car. Very much similar to the regular sedan version of this car, other than uh, heavier duty uh, rear suspension for load hauling. These things actually have an enormous capability for hauling because the suspension uh, is self-adjusting it will level for virtually anything I've ever put in it like you can put pickup truck loads in these things and uh, still rides like a Rolls Royce better actually I've had this thing almost 10 years and uh, I got it uh, through my friend Richard who was the Citroen dealer uh, or service uh, department for Edmonton back in the 80s it's not a restored car but it's uh, it's a fun old driver. It's a little rough around the edges, especially the interior, which I'd like to redo soon enough. But meanwhile, it's a totally usable car. I drive it lots. I put a lot of miles on it every year. Well, by my standards, I don't go very far. But if I do have to go far, this is the car I take. I don't uh, I don't even really consider much else. Uh, these do not accelerate well, but they will tour along at 130 kilometers an hour easily all day long and get uh, well over 30 miles to the gallon while they're doing it. It's a 2.1 liter pushrod hemi head four cylinder turn around backwards with a four speed manual in front and uh, you know very very well engineered car. The Achilles heel of these cars was well is it possible to have two Achilles heels? Uh, number one, of course, rust, and number two being, you know, more complex maintenance than, than a regular normal car. But, you know, get around the first one quite easily by just not driving it in the salt. And uh, the second one, well, other than having to buy a metric set of tools, which everybody has now anyway, and read a couple of manuals about how to maintain them, they're actually, you know, it's just a car. Just a fantastic old sled and we should probably go around the block and maybe I'll give it a little rinse. It looks like it got driven in here and shut off last fall. And uh, always one of my favorite things, first uh, Citroen drive of the year, especially after driving the truck all winter, which rides like a, you know, apple cart. And I'm hoping Frankers will come with me. Would you like to go for a car ride, Vinny? Come on, get in. Ready to go?
Good enough. Let's go. Some of you probably know that I have a fair number of cars, and uh, I have to say that this is uh, this is one of the very few that all well this and the Model T uh, are ones that all just make up some reason to go somewhere just so I get to drive it. This one I really like driving just for the experience. They're just so weird and so absolutely different from any other car. Uh, even people who've had lots of very nice cars are always amazed at just the different level of, of ride in this car and uh, I've got lots of big American boats and I love them but the DS is just it's on another level like you can actually pick the level that you want it to be on so that big white bar is normal driving height I usually run it there or the one above that which is kind of like slightly rough terrain the one above that is really rough terrain and the one above that is like going through rivers or changing the tire since we're not going through any rivers, I'm just going to leave it where it is. And we're going to take Mini Frankers for a little ride. You ready, man? It's hot today, isn't it, Mini? Okay, let's go. The list of firsts on this car is pretty long. And uh, I won't get into all of it, but uh, certainly one of the first mass-produced cars the uh, radial tires and the Michelin XAS, the first asymmetric tire, uh, designed for this car and sold exclusively on it and still available uh, at a pretty considerable expense. But uh, this car, like the Fraser, I, uh, when I first put it together, I thought, oh, I don't want to drop two grand on a set of tires for a $500 car. And uh, now, 10 years later, I'm kind of wishing I had, because I've been limping it along on whatever old ones I could find. And it drives okay, but a set of four brand new Michelins would really, you know, that would really seal the deal for me. But anyway, one of these days, the car's just been such a hammer that I really should treat it to a nice set of new shoes. But man, tires are not cheap anymore. Neither is gas, but this thing doesn't use very much. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed a look at the 1971 D Safari. Uh, you know, going on 10 years of, I wouldn't say trouble-free, but largely trouble-free motoring with this fantastic French icon. Uh, like many owners of these cars, uh, I never want to be without one, so no matter what happens, the fleet will always include at least one DS, as there is really nothing at all like it. And uh, that's not always the greatest thing, but usually it is. This is a car that I, uh, I just absolutely adore. and. Uh, you know, I got a lot of cars and I think a lot of people who have a lot of cars would probably agree uh, if one of them is a DS that it's the one that they would really hate to be without. Anyway, we'll see everybody in a couple days. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, we've got lots more mayhem coming up on the weekend, including at least one gigantic old Chrysler product pulling out for a drive. So we'll see you then. Cheers for me and the Menace Dog. Oh, there it goes. Hey, it's haircut time, hey? Haircut time tomorrow. Dave. Bye. What a good girl. This is a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit.